Chapter 521 Treasure in the Sea The three sails rose at the same time. The mysterious and gorgeous crystal sailboat slowly rose from the bottom of the lake and floated in the water in a magical way, looking magnificent. My girl, marched toward the ocean. Han Sin was incredibly excited. This crystal sailboat was much better than a submarine. It was an interstellar warship in the water. Master, do you want to go above the surface? Asked Mermaid Princess. No, let's march on the bottom. Naturally, Hansen would not let the crystal sailboat to go up to look for trouble. Yes, master, replied Mermaid Princess and turned the rudder in her hand. The giant crystal sailboat suddenly sailed toward the ocean following the channel connecting the lake and the ocean. The scenery at the bottom of the sea was indeed incredible. Hansen saw a region of shellfish, which piled up like small mountains for hundreds of miles. All kinds of corals were colorful and glamorous. Clusters of fish were playing games and millions in the ocean. Giant monsters that looked like dragons were passing by, making one's heart tremble. Luckily, the Crystal Palace was indestructible. Otherwise, if it were hit by the horrendous beast, it would be ruined before long. Boom boom. A dual-headed turtle that looked like a hill hit the Crystal Palace several times before it went away slowly. The number of the creatures inside the ocean was beyond Han Sin's imagination. However, he did not know what the status of those creatures was. He could not hunt as he wished for that reason. In addition, Hansen wanted to check out first what the ocean had to offer. All kinds of sea creatures that he had never seen before were swimming. From afar, he seemed to see a red river flowing on the bottom of the sea. However, when he approached it, he found it was formulated by numerous red-shelled prawns, each as thick as a motorcycle. They were swimming among the seaweeds growing on the seabed. At first glance, Hansen could not see the end of them, and he did not know how many there were. Hansen's mouth was watering, so he commanded the Crystal Palace to stop. Not turning on the function to avoid water, Hansen opened up a channel that looked like a swimming pool. When one of the red-shelled prawn passed by, Hansen used the Ean Force to hit its head and killed it instantaneously. Primitive Creature Fire Prawn Kill No beast soul gained. Eat its meat to gain 0 to 10 primitive geno points. Hansen took the prawn back, shelled it to expose the meat that looked like jelly. He cut the meat into pieces and dipped it into some sauce. Suddenly, he felt the meat was so sweet and tasty. With such treasures, will I ever worry that the resources are lacking? Hansen was overjoyed, commanding Mermaid Princess to control the Crystal Palace to continue forward on the bottom of the ocean. The creatures in the ocean were much more than the land. They were beyond Hansen's imagination. Many of them Hansen has never heard of before. Humans did not have the ability to hunt creatures in the ocean yet. This might be the first time for humans to hunt creatures in deep sea. However, because most of the sea creatures were huge in size, Hansen did not rush to hunt. He mainly came to check out the resources nearby first. When there were suitable creatures, he would do some hunting. If there were none, he was in no rush. The speed of the crystal boat was very fast inside the water. In just five to six days, it had already sailed out of the area of the ice sea. The water gradually became warm and the species of the creatures had also changed. Hansen saw some blue balls glowing at the bottom of the sea. When he approached them, he saw they were giant jellyfish dancing in the water. Fish of different colors were swimming in groups. Some shellfish were opening up at the bottom of the sea. Hansen saw there were several shiny pearls inside a scallop that was the size of a bowl. Feeling interested, he swam out of the Crystal Palace and tried to grab the pearls. However, the scallop quickly shot, trying to break Hansen's hand. Luckily, Hansen took his hand back fast enough and took the closed scallop back to the sailboat. Placing the scallop the size of a bowl on a crystal table, Hansen hit it with the Ean Force and suddenly heard the voice. Mutant Creature Treasure Scallop Killed no beast soul gained. It its meat to gain 0 to 10 mutant geno points. Hansen was very happy. He did not expect it to be a mutant creature. There was not much meat inside the scallop, so he should be able to finish it in one meal. This would give him at least 7 to 8 mutant geno points. Opening up the scallop, Hansen took out the pearls. There were three in total, all around and shiny. These would be rare in the alliance. Is this a gear as well? Hansen thought to himself. He was not sure whether these pearls could be counted as gears. Hansen took back several more scallops. However, after killing them, he found that not all of them were mutant creatures. Most of them were just primitive creatures, 
and only the treasure scallops with silver pearls were mutant ones. There were at least tens of thousands of treasure scallops in this region. Hansen took a dozen back to eat himself and commanded the Crystal Palace to go forward. After traveling for a few more days and eating many sea creatures, Hansen had gained a dozen mutant geno points, making his mutant geno points as many as 33. This day, he saw from afar that in the deep ocean, there was a huge city that looks like a gigantic beast crawling on the bottom of the sea, an underwater shelter. Hansen glanced at it from afar and commanded the Crystal Palace to turn around, not daring to approach the shelter. Judging by the size of the shelter, it was at least a royal shelter. Hansen was alone at this point, and he was under the water as well. There was no way he could conquer the royal shelter. Because the royal shelter had blocked the way of the Crystal Palace, Hansen could only try to sail to the side. However, the water became more and more shallow, and it eventually reached the shore. Hansen glanced at the shore from afar and found many humans, out of his expectation. There was a castle next to the shore, which should be a human shelter, to Hansen's joy. The ice field was surrounded by ocean and blocked from other places by the royal shelter. There was no way for the ice field to contact the outside. However, now Hansen could drive the Crystal Palace and come out from the bottom of the sea. This was a great business route. If he used it well, it was easy to make money. Parking the Crystal Palace at the bottom of the sea, Hansen rode the Silver Eel to go out. He swam to the shore and planned to ask where he was at. However, when he approached the shore, he found it was different from he had imagined. The reason for there to be so many people was that they were trying to conquer the shelter on the shore. In front of the shelter, there were many creatures that looked like porcupines, covered in spikes, which could be shot like arrows. The humans charged several times but failed to break into the rain of spikes. Many people ended up getting hurt. Chapter 522 Stealing the Spirit in front of the group of porcupines, a giant nine feet tall covered in black iron armor ran into the army of humans on a huge boar, holding a tower shield in one hand and a double axe in the other. There was no one among the humans who could do anything to him. A human evolver who looked quite fit and should have a fitness over a hundred was slashing a long broadsword at the giant. However, all the strikes were blocked by the tower shield of the giant warrior, who was not hurt. With the rampage of the huge boar, no one could stop the double axe in the giant's hand. Hansen took a look at it and felt surprised. This seemed to be an aristocrat shelter, so the giant warrior should be an aristocrat spirit, the equivalence of mutant creatures. However, the defense of his armor and shield was so good that even the human evolver with more than a hundred in fitness index cannot break his shield, which was astonishing. Coupled with the spikes coming from the porcupines, the humans could not go inside the shelter at all nor did they have any opportunity to destroy the spirit stone of the giant warrior. What a nice meat shield spirit. I will not miss it. Hansen was very motivated. That spirit was very strong and muscular. Together with the tower shield and armor, he had incredible defense. Although he was just an aristocrat spirit, he was no worse than some royal spirits in terms of defense. If he could get this spirit, it would be much easier for him to kill creatures in the future with a shield. Hansen summoned the golden armor and rushed out of the ocean. He directly went to the direction of the spirit shelter. There was no use to kill the spirit. He must grab the spirit stone as soon as possible. The injuries were heavy in human army. As they were hesitating whether they should retreat, they suddenly saw a golden figure rushing toward the spirit shelter at an incredible speed. The group of porcupines bristled and shot spikes at the golden figure. A rain of spikes was flying toward him. Many people were nervous as they watched. They had suffered a lot from the spikes and knew how good they were. Even mutant armor could not fully block their penetration. There were at least a thousand spikes shooting at the golden figure. The man will very likely be killed in the end. However, the golden figure did not stop at all and rushed into the spikes. The spikes hit him like a storm, making noises continuously. All the spikes that touched the golden figure were flicked away or broken, Yet the golden figure was not hurt at all. He was still charging toward the spirit shelter at a high speed. Round after round of spikes did not affect the golden figure at all. The golden figure soon went into the porcupines. As he moved, he killed several porcupines already. The porcupines guarding the shelter suddenly became a mess, while the golden figure had rushed into the spirit shelter. Everything happened so fast. 
When the golden figure disappeared in the shelter, the army of humans then realized what had happened. As the porcupines were disorganized, humans started to charge with all they got. The spirit giant warrior saw him entering the spirit shelter and became astonished. Riding on the giant boar, he ran into the shelter. Without the help of the giant warrior, the disorganized porcupines became even weaker in front of the army of humans. Shortly, humans had entered the shelter. Inside the shelter, they saw creature bodies lay everywhere. The golden figure rushed deep inside the shelter nonstop. Even groups of creatures cannot stop him at all. With no weapon, he killed every creature in front of him and entered the most magnificent hall in the castle. The spirit warrior riding the board chased after him like crazy, but it was too late. When the spirit warrior came to the hall, the golden figure had already walked out of the hall with a glowing gem in his hand. Thump! When the spirit warrior came to the golden figure, he did not launch a suicidal attack toward the man as people expected. Surprisingly, it kneeled in front of the golden figure. Mad Shield is willing to give his master the purest soul, follow his master all his life, and never betray his master. Everyone felt astonished, seeing this incredible scene. It was so rare that a spirit would offer his allegiance. In addition, one should beat the spirit before the spirit offered his allegiance. However, the golden figure did not even fight the spirit warrior, yet the spirit gave his allegiance already. The chance that this would happen was probably less than 1 out of 10,000. Seeing the golden figure placing the spirit stone on the forehead of the spirit, people were almost blinded by the strong light of the stone. Then, both the spirit and spirit stone disappeared. Obviously, they had been taken back by their master. After the spirit was gone, the creatures in the shelter became a mess. The giant boar which was the spirit's mount roared and charged the golden figure. However, the golden figure did not try to dodge at all. The moment when the giant boar had come to his face, his fist covered in golden armor hit the boar. Facing the giant creature that were rushing over like armored vehicles, the golden figure simply took back his fist casually, while the giant boar suddenly had blood coming out of all the holes on its body, dying at the feet of the golden figure. Strong, he's too strong. Everybody gasped. Just now, when they were fighting outside, the humans had seen how strong the giant mount was. Even evolvers with a fitness index more than a hundred could not face it head on. However, the creature was killed by the golden figure with one strike. Dollar, he must be Dollar. Dollar is among us. Someone suddenly exclaimed, making people having a chill. Yes, the golden armor, the invincible attitude, who else could it be other than Dollar? Damn it, it turns out Dollar is here. Dollar is simply invincible, even in Second God Sanctuary. Dollar, I love you. With Dollar here, we will never be afraid of the creatures. That punch is so badass. Hansen did not stay at all. After killing the boar, he jumped to the top of the palace and quickly left the shelter. He was basically stealing other people's spirit and felt too ashamed to stay. Chapter 523 Huge Gain the article Dollar Spotted at Yellowstone Beach soon gained a lot of attention on the Skynet. The article depicted how Dollar came from nowhere, beat all the porcupines, gained the allegiance of the spirit, and killed the giant boar with one punch, and other details. In the end, it also praised Dollar for not staying for the compliments. If it were Hansen who was reading this article, he would feel quite embarrassed. He was not being selfless, but did not want to be scolded for stealing the spirit after the other people had sacrificed their lives. However, the golden armor of Dollar was so famous that people simply treated him as Dollar after they saw the golden armor. Most people did not know that Hansen had sold his golden armor already. Not knowing Hansen himself, other people could only determine whether it was him by the armor. If whoever wearing golden armor is Dollar, then there will be countless dollars. This one is definitely real. His arrogance and strength show everything. He is covered in armor. You can tell he's arrogant? Of course, who is Dollar? He is so peerless that I could tell it is him from three inch thick steel plate. How can his armor block my eyes? I was there. He is 100% Dollar. So strong. Killed the boar with one punch. As far as I know, Dollar had sold his golden armor a long time ago. The one you met is definitely not him. It is definitely him. I could feel that he is Dollar. And he looked at me full of love. I think he is in love with me. Wake up, son. Many people were discussing whether it was Dollar or not. Some believed so, some not. No one could persuade the other it was otherwise. 
It soon became a quarrel. At the same time, Han Sin was sitting in the Crystal Palace, checking out the new spirit he had gained, Mad Shield. As he had expected, this was an aristocrat spirit. More than nine feet tall, he was covered in black iron armor. With a tower shield and a double axe, he looked like an ancient god. The guy had shield in his name, so his shield was especially strong. Han Sin's claws attacked the shield and only left a mark about three inches deep. In terms of defense, Mad Shield was definitely the equivalence of a sacred blood creature. If it were not for the fact that the Ghost Pod Claws were berserk, ordinary sacred blood weapons would be even less threatening to him. Unfortunately, he is not a pretty woman spirit. Hansen felt ashamed. Initially, he wanted to form a gang full of pretty spirits. However, spirits were so rare that he might as well recruit some male spirits first. In the future, the Crystal Palace needed a lot of help on board in order to gain a huge amount of sea creatures. However, Hansen did not want to recruit too many humans, but preferred his own spirits. After resting for half a day, Hansen went to the shore again and asked about the situation nearby. This was Yellowstone Sea. Not far from the beach was a forest. In the forest, there were a lot of human shelters. However, there were also a lot of spirit shelters. Humans and spirits were fighting intensely. This is somewhere that is truly designed for human cultivation. On the ice field, there are so few resources that I can't even have any night spirits. Hansen thought to himself. As he was thinking how he should make use of his current resources, he suddenly heard a crack in his sea of soul, which made Hansen feel happy. He looked to his sea of soul and saw the light cocoon of the golden growler had broken. The golden growler that was all golden and shiny came out of the cocoon. It seemed that its body had turned into gold completely, like a gold statue, looking much stronger. Berserk Super Creature Golden Growler Mount The Berserk Golden Growler had enhanced greatly in both speed and strength. It could even be compared to the Sacred Blood Mounts in Second God Sanctuary. In addition, its ability to change size was something that an ordinary Sacred Blood Mount did not have. Hansen fed the Black Crystal to the Snowy Wolf, and the mutant snowy wolf turned into a berserk beast soul after just one day. As he fed the black crystal to his beast souls, Hansen ordered Mermaid Princess to take the Crystal Palace to the ice field. Because the resources were rich near Yellowstone Sea, beast souls were relatively cheap in that area. If he wanted to sell his beast souls, he should go back to Goddess Shelter to get a good price. When he went back, Hansen tried to make the Crystal Palace go directly to the sea near Goddess Shelter. His journey was quite smooth. The goddess shelter was surrounded by the ocean in three directions. Therefore, it was easy to get to the sea near the shelter. He did not encounter other shelters under the water, and he saved himself the trouble of traveling through the mountainous region. On his way back, Hansen hunted a large number of primitive creatures and some mutant creatures he found in the water, put them on the back of the golden growler, and returned to goddess shelter. When people in the shelter saw the golden growler and mountain of meat, they were all surprised. There were less and less creatures that they could hunt nearby, so they had never imagined a scene like this. Hearing the news, young Mon Lee also came by. Seeing the huge pile of creatures, she was also dazed. Mon Lee, count the meat, and you can decide how to sell them. Hansen then transferred all the primitive beast souls and mutant beast souls he had gained to young Mon Lee, asking her to sell them all. Young Mon Lee saw the dozens of beast souls that Hansen transferred to her, many of which were not only mutant, but also berserk, which made her feel quite incredulous. Where did you get the meat and beast souls? Young Monley looked at Hansen with a complicated expression. I hunted them from the sea. Hansen knew that the creatures looked like they were from the ocean, and there was no way he could hide it. The sea? Young Monley became even more surprised. It was much harder to hunt in the sea than on the land. I'm such a guy that could kill the tiger on the mountain and dragon in the sea. Isn't it absolutely normal for me to be able to hunt in the ocean? No need to look at me like that, Hansen smiled and said. Young Monley did not want to smile. Although Hansen was joking, she understood that the difficulty of the task was no joke. How did he achieve that? Young Monley felt it was more and more difficult for her to understand Hans Senator when she was in First God Sanctuary, she felt Hansen was inferior to Dollar. However, after they met in Second God Sanctuary, what Hansen did astonished her every time. At this moment, young Monley no longer had the thought she first had. She only felt it was more and more difficult for her to know Han Senator, she did not know what kind of guy he was. Chapter 524 
study the ancient language. The members of Goddess Gang all bought some meat and beast souls set a very low price. However, people outside of the gang could only purchase the meat and beast souls at a high price. Even so, there were still many people competing for them. The resources at Goddess Shelter were so limited that if they did not compete for it, lots of people wanted it. Hansen planned to sell some stuff like this every once in a while in the future. The money he earned would be enough for him to spend in the Alliance. However, Hansen was not really obsessed. He did not want to waste too much time on it but want to focus on his own evolution instead. There was much meat of the Golden Crab left. It would take Hansen a few days to eat them all. In addition, to eat the same thing every day was not fun, and he wanted to change to other food once in a while. Hansen decided to take a few days off. When he finished eating the meat of the golden crab, he thought it was time for him to try to kill the berserk gargoyle in the nest. When he returned to Daphne, and he ignored him when he went to see his girlfriend, not even glancing at him. Hansen was happy enough that Annie did not do anything. He did not want to provoke her and ignored her as well. Hansen, aren't you interested in the ancient language? An expert in that area has come recently. If you're interested, you could go see him. Hearing Ji Yinran's words, Han Sin was immediately excited. He quickly asked, which ancient language expert? Why would we have one here? Ji Yinran smiled and said, Professor Su is very talented in linguistics. Also, he is quite a celebrity in the Alliance. Besides ancient language, he has studied a lot of languages from other species. If he is famous, will he ignore me if I just go see him? asked Han Sr. I don't think so. The management asked him to come over to teach us some knowledge about crystallizers. You could go and have a look first. If you have the opportunity, just ask him about the ancient language. That should be fine, Ji Yin Ren replied. Hansen knew what had happened. Since the last incident, Daphne did not have a chance to undertake a task again. New people were recruited, and some affairs were rearranged. This time, the management asked Professor Su to teach them about the crystallizer culture, so obviously there will be no task in a short amount of time. This also showed that the management was paying a lot of attention to Daphne. Hansen was naturally very interested in the ancient language. He now could read everything in Dong Xian Sutra, but it did not mean he could understand them. Hansen still did not understand many parts, and he did not want to practice the martial arts before he understood what was going on. When it was time for the lecture of Professor Su, Hansen went to attend. Unexpectedly, he saw the fat squad leader and other cookhouse soldiers. After chatting with them for a while, he then learned that the lecture was compulsory. Except for some higher officers and guards including Annie and Hansen, everyone needed to go to the lecture on time. The language of Crystallizer was too complicated. In other words, they were not even words, but more like images. All sorts of complicated lines were put together to make an image that looked like the inner structure of a machine. It was indeed very difficult to learn the meaning. Even with Han Sin's brain which had been strengthened, he felt it was difficult to memorize those images. The other soldiers felt even more painful. When they went to the lecture, they felt like they were not understanding anything. Although it was very difficult to learn, Han Sin was still paying attention to the lecture and tried to memorize. There seemed to be some kind of a connection between the Nine Life Cat and the Crystallizes. In addition, he would go to the ruins anyways in the future, so it would not hurt if he understood more about the Crystallizer language. After Professor Su's lecture, Hansen quickly walked to the professor and saluted to him. Professor Su, I have a question regarding other languages that I want to ask you. I wonder if you have the time? Professor Su was a general in terms of military ranks, which was much higher than Hansen's. However, Professor Su did not have any power. Is it about the crystallizers? Tell me about it. Professor Su was quite easygoing. I want to ask you something about the ancient language of the Alliance, Hansen said. Professor Su looked Hansen up and down in surprise and asked, You have studied the ancient language? Currently, although the Alliance did not put less emphasis on liberal arts, many young people were more willing to spend time on practicing hypergeno arts. After all, that would bring them direct benefits. In addition, that would help them to survive and cultivate in the God Century. Very few people would spend a large amount of time to read books and study. Professor Su did not know whether Hansen had really learned the ancient language or he was just trying to kiss the professor's ass. I have studied a little bit. However, I have many confusions and there are not enough materials for me to clear them, said Hans Sr. All right, it is about lunchtime. 
Let's work together and we can chat in the cafeteria. Professor Su was not arrogant at all. If Hansen was indeed interested in the ancient language, Professor Su would like to answer his questions. Hansen was overjoyed and followed Professor Su to the cafeteria. After they had ordered, they found a quiet spot to chat and eat. Initially, Professor Su thought even if Hansen had learned the ancient language, he probably only knew some superficial things. After all, Hansen was too young. However, after chatting with Hansen, he found that Hansen had worked hard on ancient language. Hansen was also quite talented and knowledgeable, which surprised Professor Su. Hansen's level was beyond his age. Hansen, do you have any relatives studying the ancient language? Professor Su couldn't help asking. No, my family used to have an alloy factory, but it was closed later. Hansen looked at Professor Su, not understanding why the professor asked that. Okay, so when did you start to learn the ancient language? Professor Su asked again. Probably two years ago, said Han Senator in fact. He just started before he evolved, so he had learned about a year at most. Professor Su was even more surprised. In two years, Hansen had achieved so much, which was very rare. Hansen was probably extremely talented in this area, otherwise he cannot have done so well. In fact, Hansen did not have other special talents. The reason he was learning fast was that his brain had absorbed the red crystal and developed again. Both his memory and analysis had been greatly improved. As he remembered more and analyzed more, he naturally became better in this area. Because they shared common interests, Professor Su and Hansen felt more and more happy as they chatted. And Hansen impressed Professor Su even more. Professor Su told some things to Hansen, which Hansen could quickly remember and understand. He could even discuss with Professor Su or raise a deeper question, which made Professor Su appreciate Hansen a lot. As the two were chatting, they forgot to eat. In the end, their food had gone cold, and they were the only two persons left in the cafeteria. When the cookhouse was about to close, they had to leave. Before he left, Professor Su gave Hansen some materials on the ancient language and asked Hansen to read them. He also told Hansen to ask himself if Hansen did not understand. Chapter 525 New Understanding After chatting with Professor Su for a long while, Hansen felt he was inspired. The materials he got from Professor Su were also a great help to him. For the things that he couldn't understand before, he had managed to perceive them after reading Professor Su's materials. After that, when he read Dog Shin Sutra again, he had many new understandings. Although there were still places that he did not understand, he had a more profound grasp of the text. Unfortunately, there were too many technical terminologies about cultivation in Dongshen Sutra. Because it was written a long time ago, Hansen still felt difficult to understand and translate everything with what he had learned. However, after reading the materials and asking Professor Su some questions, Hansen had some new gain and translated another technique. The reason that Hansen was able to do that was that he had read in Yang Sutra, which Yin Yang Blast was based on. This technique in Dongshen Sutra was focused on the Yin Force, which had a lot of similarity with the Yin Yang Sutra. However, obviously the technique was better. If he could practice well, he could make his force to penetrate a large object. It was a bit exaggerating to say he could hit the bull behind the mountain, but it would not be difficult for him to penetrate through a steel plate of several feet thick. Hansen was a big fan of the Yin Force, so he practiced according to the technique recorded in the Sutra. If he was able to reach that level, in the future, he could hit the inner organs of the creature when he met one and did not need to break their tough skin and bones. After several days, Hansen felt he had already been able to use the Yin Force better. Originally, he could only penetrate 3 to 4 inches, but now he could penetrate 1 foot already. This sutra is indeed a great book. It deserves to be called the very best secret technique of a strong man. If I could learn the true content, it should be even much better than Jade Skin. Hansen wanted to translate the entire text right away, but he cannot rush. If he practiced before he understood, there might be danger and risk. There is no Geno solution designed for Dongshin Sutra, so he might hurt himself. When he had rested for more than 10 days, eating golden crab every day in the shelter, he had eventually finished eating the crab and gained 7 sacred Geno points. Currently, Hansen had 28 sacred Geno points. Hansen, Super Body, King Spirit, Status, Evolver, Lifespan, 300, Requirement for Next Evolution, 
100 Geno Points Geno Points Owned Ordinary Geno Points 100 Primitive Geno Points 100 Mutant Geno Points 43 Sacred Geno Points 28 Checking his progress, Hansen felt the number was quite good for someone who had entered Second God Sanctuary for less than a year. Currently, Hansen's fitness index had definitely passed 120. It took a test for him to find out the exact number. Anyway, he was much stronger than Tiger of Blue Blood in the past now. Hansen estimated that when he maxed out on all four types of Geno points, he should be able to reach 170 or 180. He wondered how strong the super creatures of Second God Sanctuary were and whether he would be able to hunt them by then. It was too early to think about that at this point. The most important thing for him was to fill up his sacred Geno points. As for mutant Geno points, Hansen was not that worried, because there were a lot of mutant Geno points in the ocean. If he had patience, it would be easy for him to fill up the mutant Geno points. However, in order to kill a sacred blood creature in the ocean, it would take a lot of work. Humans' ability to fight would be reduced greatly in the water, and they cannot breathe in the water. To fight a sea creature on the same level as him, even Hansen was scared. Once he had an accident in deep ocean, there was no way for him to run. I will go kill the berserk gargoyle first. Hansen entered God's sanctuary again, making up his mind to go to the nest. Sacred blood beast souls were still very attractive in Hansen's eyes. In addition, the beast souls from the eggs were normally very good and of rare types. However, before Hansen even left the goddess shelter, Zhu Ting found him. Captain, I heard you have several berserk mutant beast souls in the ones you brought back. Zhu Ting grinned and asked. There are two. What? You want them? Hansen looked at Zhu Ting, smiling. Yes, yes. Name your price. Zhu Ting nodded quickly. A berserk mutant beast soul could even have similar abilities to sacred blood beast souls. Of course Zhu Ting wanted something like that. In such damn place, if he had a berserk mutant beast soul, he could have a much better life because it would be easy for him to kill anything but sacred blood creatures. Easy, you have seven twists to trade, Hansen smiled and said. Zhu Ting suddenly had a long face and said, Brother, you don't understand. I do not dare to give you seven twists, otherwise the Chins will never forgive me. Then I have no way to help you. Just purchase them from Yang Manli, Hansen said, looking helpless. No, her price is incredibly high. Except for those who are rich, no one has that kind of money. Zhu Ting was depressed. If he had that kind of money, he wouldn't go to Han Sr. In fact, Hansen told Yang Manli that there was no rush to sell the berserk mutant beast souls, which was why Yang Manli's price was high. He was just trying to show off the power of Goddess Gang and did not plan to sell for real. Of course, if someone were really willing to pay a high price, Yang Manli would not turn it down. I could not help you with that. Hansen patted Zhu Ting on his shoulder and left the shelter. Zhu Ting looked at Hansen, puzzled. He did not understand how Hansen was able to get so many nice stuff. Hansen spent much less time than him in Second God Sanctuary. However, in less than one year, at such a bad place, Hansen had even sold Berserk Mutant Beast Souls, which was astonishing. Zhu Ting gritted his teeth and decided to purchase the Berserk Violent at first. He only had enough money to buy this one because of the high price Yang Manli gave. However, when Zhu Ting found Yang Manli, Yang Manli told him that not only Berserk Mutant Beast Souls, even Mutant Beast Souls were sold out. Damn it. So many rich people. Zhu Ting regretted that he did not buy Violent Ape when he could, and now he did not even have the chance. It seems that I must have a conversation with Han Senator, he must have better Beast Souls. Maybe that item could make him give me some better Beast Souls, Zhu Ting muttered to himself. Chapter 526 Beast Soul of Nightmare When Han Sen was at the nest again, he summoned all his beast souls. For the time he spent in the Alliance, the Golden Pincer King had already been evolved into a berserk sacred blood beast soul, and the golden armor looked even better at this point. The Gargoyle Glyph had also been summoned. The Desert Bird was hovering over his head, enhancing all the beast souls further. Han Sen felt he had enough strength to blow up a planet. Of course, that was only an illusion. However, he was much better than before. Into the nest again, the silver berserk gargoyle quickly rushed toward him. Hansen did not dodge this time, blocking the gargoyle's arm with his ghost pod claws. Bang! The claws and the arm of the gargoyle suddenly clashed, leaving a new long injury on the gargoyle's arm. 
silver blood suddenly started to flow. Hansen stepped half a step back. His strength was no weaker than this berserk creature. The gargoyle roared fiercely, trying to grab Hansen with its claws, its nails looking like silver daggers. Hansen was not weaker than it in terms of either strength or speed. In addition, his footwork was much better than the creature's. So, there was no way Hansen would let it grab him. As he swayed, not only had he dodged the attacks, but he had also managed to leave scratches on the gargoyle, making it bleed. The gargoyle roared angrily, but it could do nothing to Han Senator. It could not even touch Han Sen's body because Han Sen's kiting skills were so good. As Han Sen was feeling content, the gargoyle suddenly scratched at him. Just when he dodged the attack, the arms of the gargoyle suddenly gained two inches and still clawed at him. The tin nails looking like silver daggers suddenly hit Han Sen's armor. Ding! The sound of metal made people's ear hurt. However, the nails that looked like daggers did not manage to penetrate the armor, but only left some shallow marks on it. Hansen was more than surprised. Berserk Golden Armor and Berserk Gargoyle Glyph combined, the defense was incredibly strong. Even the Berserk Gargoyle did not manage to hurt him. This strike gave Hansen more confidence. He took back the Ghost Pod Claws and hit the Gargoyle with his fists. Boom boom. His fists were thrown, and legs were dancing. His fists hit Gargoyle, making it step back continuously. The gargoyle was overpowered by Hansen and killed by Hansen in the end using the Ian Force. Berserk Sacred Blood Creature Inferno Gargoyle killed. No beast soul gained. Meet an edible. Hansen was dazed. It was the first time he encountered such a result. There was no beast soul or meat. What bad luck exclamation were. Luckily, Hansen did not mind. There was an egg, which 100% would produce a sacred blood beast soul. In his hand, it was the same as a berserk sacred blood beast soul. What sacred blood beast soul should it be? I would prefer a pair of wings, or a beast soul add-on like the devil sword. Hansen climbed up the cells carefully, looking inside. There were many cells at this place. However, as he went deeper, he did not see any other creatures. It seemed that the gargoyle was the only creature there. Is there not an egg? Hansen became a bit worried. Luckily, very soon he saw the egg making him feel relieved. Walking up to the egg, Hansen broke it with the claws and heard the familiar voice. Producing Beast Soul. Hansen saw a piece of fog coming out of the egg, which gradually became a beast soul in front of him. The beast soul looked like it was made of tungsten. It looked like a tiger or a panther. With a horn looking like a lightning bolt, the creature had wings on its back. As it blinked, it looked incredibly fierce. The beast soul turned into a light entering Han Sen's sea of soul. He suddenly heard a voice. Beast soul produced. Sacred blood beast soul nightmare gained. Hansen quickly looked at the information of nightmare and saw it was a flying beast soul. He summoned nightmare and suddenly had a huge pair of tungsten devil wings on his back, looking rather cool. Hansen tried its speed and found it was much faster than the sacred blood wings from first god sanctuary indeed. He almost reached the exit of the nest immediately. Aha. I can fly again eventually. Hansen was overjoyed. With the ability to fly, it would be easier for him to do a lot of things. The sacred blood wings should be fast enough in second god sanctuary. Without hesitation, Hansen fed the black crystal to Nightmare. Berserk sacred blood wings should be the fastest humans had ever seen in second god sanctuary. With Nightmare wings, unless he had encountered a super creature, Hansen could be the king of second god sanctuary. It will be even better if I have sacred blood bow and arrow. Then, I could go back to the top and look down on the entire second god sanctuary. Hansen felt it was a pity that the sacred blood bow and arrow beast souls were hard to find. After destroying the egg, Hansen did not have any need to stay in goddess shelter, so he decided to check out the situation on the ice field. Previously, Li Xingluan and the others had already been discussing taking down the royal spirit shelter. Hansen wondered if they had achieved an agreement. If the three shelters could unite to conquer the Royal Spirit Shelter, Hansen would have the opportunity to gain another Royal Spirit. Using Crystal Palace, Hansen entered the frozen lake from the sea. The Angel, Snow Charmer, Meowth, and Mad Shield were also summoned by Hans Senator. He had no need to worry about being seen by others, and his trip was rather nice. Snow Charmer and Mad Shield were in charge of hunting the creatures in the water. After getting mutant meat, Mermaid Princess and Archangel would serve him. He was simply in heaven. 
When reaching the frozen lake, Hansen had gained three more mutant Geno points, which was because the mutant creature killed was too big in size, so Hansen had only finished one third of it. As for the gigantic creatures that looked very fierce, he thought he should learn some hyper Geno arts that could be used under the water, so that he could hunt those creatures later. Even if he could not eat all that meat, he could feed it to Archangel. When Archangel transformed, Hansen would be invincible in Second God's Sanctuary. When I go back to the Alliance, I must find a way to get my hands on a hyper Geno art that could be used under the water. I wonder if there is one that could allow me to breathe under the water, Hansen wondered. He came to the Star Wheel Shelter again. Before Hansen went to Li Xingluan, Zhu Ting found Han Senior. Hansen, I eventually found you. I have made an agreement with Black God and Philip. We will attack the Royal Shelter in a couple of days. Come and help me, will you? Li Xingluan said excitedly. Chapter 527 Silver Beetle I am afraid I have to let you down. I am the enemy of Black God, so it should be inconvenient for me to go with you? Hansen smiled and said, You are the one who injured Black God and stole the Snakefish King? Li Xingluan suddenly remembered, looking at Hansen in surprise. It is no other than me. I don't think we should go together. When you started the fight, I will join you at that time, Hansen said. That'll do. However, you must stay careful. At that time, all the advanced fighters in Black God's shelter would be there. If Black God did anything to harm you, it would be hard for you to escape. I am in charge of attacking from the west, you could go to my side, Li Xingluan pondered and said. Who is the one in charge of attacking the main gate? Hansen asked. Black God is the strongest, so he's doing that. After Hansen asked about a few more details, he got up to leave. However, he had made up his mind to go to the main gate where Black God would be. Of course, before conquering the shelter, Hansen would not thwart Black God's efforts. However, after taking the spirit shelter down, Hansen would not be polite anymore. It was the first time for the human evolvers to unite together on the ice field. The scale was huge. Evolvers preparing and transporting supplies were everywhere to be seen. Some better fighters were in charge of hunting the creatures nearby. Because the resources were so limited on the ice field, Humans were only able to fight against the royal shelter after developing for a hundred plus years and a couple of generations. However, everything needed to be spent on the ice field in order for humans to succeed. If humans lost, they would have such a heavy loss. Therefore, no one dared to slack. In addition, there must be some troubles regarding commanding. Once the shelter was conquered, no one could guarantee that humans would not fight against each other regarding the distribution of gains. Hansen was in no hurry to go there. It was no use to go too early. He would like to go after the fight had started. Indeed, like Li Xingluan said, the three forces launched a united strike against the royal shelter after two days. Black God's shelter was in charge of attacking the main gate of the royal shelter. From afar, Hansen saw groups of creatures rushing out of the royal shelter, fighting against human evolvers. Black God took a dozen evolvers who had a fitness level above a hundred, trying to go inside the shelter. However, they were soon stopped by sacred blood creatures. In the other two directions, humans were also stopped by creatures. Fighting could be heard everywhere, while the silver-haired spirit girl was standing on top of the wall of the shelter, looking at everything coldly, not planning to move a finger. Hansen eventually witnessed a large-scale fight. Hansen could not see clearly what was going on with the Xingluan and Philip. However, Against the dozen evolvers with a fitness level above a hundred, nearly twenty sacred blood creatures had rushed out of the royal shelter, blocking the attacks from Black God's shelter completely. This was obviously not everything the royal shelter had got. There were definitely more sacred blood creatures inside the shelter, fighting against enemies from the other two directions. This royal shelter was incredibly strong. One man could never take down a large royal shelter like this one. Hansen felt quite impressed. Without uniting the forces on the ice field, an individual could never conquer shelter like this unless he had the strength of a super creature. Giant snakes as long as 300 feet, huge beasts that looks like titans, black winged beasts and birds flying in the sky. The whole battlefield was a mess. The scene was hundred times more impressive than a movie. It was equally magnificent as an interstellar war. In addition, the bloody scene was something that could not be seen there. Even Hansen who was preparing to steal some gains felt his blood burning, wishing to fight next to the Evolvers. Black God was better at commanding than Hansen thought. 
In addition, the majority of the Evolvers had been through service, so they were no strangers to fighting together. When they were besieging creatures, they collaborated well. In fact, the casualties were not huge. In addition, some were weaker Evolvers would be in charge of logistics. Once someone was hurt, he would be sent out of the battlefield immediately. Not a lot of people died. This Black God is quite impressive. He is able to command such a large-scale war. Quite talented, Hansen thought to himself. However, an enemy was an enemy no matter how good he was. Because for more than a hundred years, humans had been bullied by this royal shelter and fought the shelter multiple times, humans had a profound understanding of how strong the royal shelter was. After discussion, the three forces launched the attack with preparation. Although the royal spirit was strong, it started to fall. It seemed that it could not withstand the attacks from all three forces for a long time. However, the silver-haired spirit did not plan to attack. She was watching the entire battlefield coldly on top of the wall, moving her staff once in a while, commanding the creatures to fight. If this continues, the shelter will be conquered if the silver-haired spirit did not have other creatures to help her, Hansen thought to himself. If it were an aristocrat shelter, Hansen would have gone inside to steal the spirit stone already. However, it was a royal shelter, and he did not know whether there were more sacred blood creatures inside. Even if Hansen went inside, he might not necessarily be able to find the spirit stone. As Hansen was thinking, he saw the silver-haired spirit living the war. However, he did not join the battlefield, but went back to the shelter. Hansen was surprised by her move. Currently, the fight had gone into a very fierce stage. The army of the creatures were at a disadvantage. If they lost her command, wouldn't they lose even sooner? When Hansen was feeling puzzled, he suddenly saw the earth started to shake on the battlefield in front of the shelter. Many stones were broken, and silver beetles started to come out like waves. Where the silver beetles passed, the bodies of both humans and creatures were eaten up completely, making one scalp prickle. More and more gaps started to appear on the land, and numerous silver beetles came out. All of a sudden, the entire battlefield was a mess. Both humans and creatures were rushing to run for their lives. No one had any intention to continue the fight. Humans and creatures that were fighting against each other a minute ago started to escape together. It was hard to imagine that they were fighting for life and death just now. Even the huge snake and the giant beast were running as fast as they could. It seemed that they were very scared of the silver beetles. Hansen was also rather scared. However, after careful observation, he found that the individual of the silver beetles was not that strong. They were slightly stronger than primitive creatures, but weaker than mutant creatures. However, there were so many of them, and their mouth were really sharp. Even sacred blood creatures had their weaknesses, so it was painful for them to have a silver beetle inside their body. However, Hansen felt his opportunity had come. Chapter 528 Enter the Shelter Alone The strength of the silver beetles was only their number and sharp mouths. In fact, their strength was not too impressive. However, wearing the golden armor and gargoyle glyph, Hansen could completely block out the silver beetles. In addition, he was covered all over, so there was no gap where the silver beetles could approach him. Although the silver beetles chased humans away, the creatures were also chased away. Taking advantage of the mess, he could enter the royal spirit and maybe there was a chance for him to get the spirit stone. Hansen summoned his armor and glyph, sneaking into the shelter in the mess. Just when he approached the battlefield, waves of silver beetles had come to him, drowning Hansen with their little bodies. Hansen felt the crackling outside his armor as the silver beetle was trying to bite his armor. However, because of the double berserk sacred blood beast souls, even their sharp mouths could not hurt the armor at all. Hansen felt reassured and marched toward the royal spirit in the sea of beetles. Under the cover of the silver beetles, no one was able to notice him. Outside the royal spirit, Hansen jumped over the wall and entered the royal spirit that looked like a cosmopolitan. The majority of the creatures had been scared away by the silver beetles. There were obviously less creatures in the royal shelter, but their number was still astonishing. Seeing the silver-haired spirit girl walking toward the center of the shelter from afar, Hansen gritted his teeth and chased in her direction. There were no silver beetles inside the shelter, but a lot of creatures rushed to haunt Senior. Hansen did not linger but spread his nightmare wings, dodging the majority of the creatures and went toward the spirit girl. 
The weird birds and black-winged beasts in the sky came toward Hans. Senator Hansen flapped his wings and dodged the block of the beasts and birds like a butterfly, thanks to the speed of the berserk sacred blood wings. He quickly reached where the spirit girl was standing. The spirit girl had already come to a large ancient architecture. Feeling the turmoil in the sky, she looked back standing on the stairs. Seeing Hansen who was in the sky, her silver pupils contracted. Even he was covered in armor, the silver-haired girl still recognized Hansen who had once killed her. She was not depending on her eyesight, but her scent that she left on Hansen's body when he killed her. Her face turned cold. The silver-haired girl waved her staff, and the birds and beasts rushed to Hans Senator, a dual-headed silver bird, and a black bull with wings also rushed to him. Hansen did not mind ordinary birds and beasts, because they were much slower and weaker than Hans Senator Hansen could kill them as he wanted. However, the silver bird and flying bull were obviously both sacred blood creatures. They blocked Hansen's way among other creatures. After doing that, the silver-haired spirit girl did not mind Hansen anymore and continued to go inside the mysterious architecture. After the spirit girl went inside the architecture, two identical black snakes were climbing on the columns at the gate, flicking out their tongues. Hansen had seen one of the black snake before. As time when the spirits were attacking the Starwheel shelter, she brought that black snake, which was also a sacred blood creature. How come there are so many sacred blood creatures in this royal shelter? Hansen frowned. Not all the royal shelters had a large number of sacred blood creatures. The number of sacred blood creatures in a royal shelter depended on the size of the shelter, the number of sacred blood creatures nearby, and the spirit's ability. In terms of both size and number of sacred blood creatures, this royal shelter was exceptional, which showed how strong the silver-haired girl was. To go back or forward was an impending decision that Hansen must make. There were so many creatures here that Hansen could not be trapped. Once he was trapped, he could never escape again. In just one second, Hansen had decided. He had already entered the shelter, so it was the perfect opportunity, and he had no reason to go out. If the three forces could not take down this royal shelter when they united, since most sacred blood creatures were not even inside the shelter at this point, he would never have an opportunity to try again if he missed this opportunity. With his eyes cold, Hansen was calculating all the moves and trajectories of the creatures he was seeing. In his mind there was a holographic image and a route that would take him inside the ancient architecture. Boom! Flapping his wings, Hansen made a dive, avoiding the silver bird and flying bull. However, because he went slower, many creatures on the floor started to jump at him, throwing themselves at Hansen who was flying low. Remaining calm, Hansen landed on an architecture. When he flew, he avoided the snaps of the creatures on the land and flew up again. In the sky, the dual-headed silver bird and other creatures rushed over again. Hansen landed again, changing his position continuously and dodging the attacks from different creatures, going toward the ancient and mysterious architecture like crazy. There was no way to block him. Hansen moved quickly among the architectures, flying up from time to time. He perfectly used the space between the architectures and the creatures themselves, going to the ancient architecture at last. The creatures were always a bit too late, not formulating any threat to Hans Sr. That included the two sacred blood creatures, because they never stopped Hans Sr. However, because he was using the terrain and the creatures, Hansen did not go straight but made a huge circle in order to arrive at the ancient architecture. The two black snakes had come down from the giant columns, blocking the closed stone gate. They opened their mouths and issued screams at Hans' sound, bearing their frightening fans, looking rather scary. Hansen did not pause and went up the stairs, rushing at the two black snakes. Behind him were all kinds of fierce creatures, looking like ghosts from hell. They followed Hans' sound and tried to take him down. Chapter 529 Fighting Silver-Haired Spirit Girl the mouth of the two black snakes looked like the dark gates toward hell. Their fangs were each longer than three feet, dripping disgusting venom, blocking Hansen's way. Hansen no longer saw a way out. There were only the two snakes. However, he did not mean to stop at all, but speeded up. With her heart thumping like a drum and blood boiling, every inch of his muscles was motivated. Stepping out, Hansen almost immediately rushed inside the mouth of one of the black snakes. Crack! The black snake quickly closed its mouth, trying to swallow Hansen like that. However, blood suddenly spilled, 
and its snakeskin was ripped from inside. Blood and the golden figure both came out. The three purple lightning bolts shone. Boom! Hansen rushed out of the stomach of the snake and hit the giant stone gate of the ancient building, smashing one of the doors and going inside without hesitation. The inside of the ancient architecture looked like a temple, full of mysterious symbols and statues of deities. Inside the temple, a statue of ghost more than 100 feet tall stood like a demon. Between the brows of the ghost there was a silver gem about the size of a fist, which should be the spirit stone of the silver-haired girl. Under the statue, the silver-haired girl had changed into her fighting state. Her perfect body covered in silver armor, she looked lean and dedicate with a perfect curve. Holding the silver slim sword, the girl had cold light in her eyes, staring at Hans Sr. Hansen quickly rushed toward the girl. Initially, he thought the sacred blood creatures would chase him inside, but they were all guarding outside the architecture and none entered the gate. Hansen was overjoyed. Just coping with the silver-haired spirit girl was much easier for him. In addition, he had killed her once. Even if he could not kill her this time, it would be easy for him to get the spirit stone. Seeing Hansen was approaching the statue, the silver-haired girl exclaimed coldly and slashed her silver sword at Hansen's throat, almost reaching her throat immediately. Hansen was astonished. Last time, he deliberately took the strike that went through his body, so it did not matter how fast her sword was, since Hansen did not want to dodge at all. However, as she cut his throat this time, he would be beheaded if he did not dodge, which could never happen. Fighting the silver-haired girl face to face, Hansen felt how fast her sword was. Stepping back, Hansen raised the ghost pod claws to block her strike and managed to save himself. Ding! The silver sword and the ghost pod claws clashed, making noise of metal. Feeling a huge force, Hansen could not help stepping back. Her strength was even a bit stronger than his. After the strike, the silver-haired girl did not stop her attacks. Like silver lightning bolts, she continued to hit Hansen with her sword, forcing him to defend himself with no chance to fight back. After taking a dozen strikes, Hansen felt the sword was so fast and unpredictable that he could only go back and could not even leave. Same as her sword, the girl had incredibly fast footwork as well. She followed Hansen like a shadow, not giving him any chance to breathe. Ding ding ding! Although Hansen had blocked all the strikes from the girl, his berserk ghost pod claws were chipped by the slim sword of hers. Hansen's arm was also numb. Until this moment had Hansen realized how lucky he was to kill the silver-haired girl last time. If he did not surprise her by taking this sword with his body and take advantage of her carelessness, he would never have had any chance. After all, Hansen had much worse fitness at that time. He was at a disadvantage facing the silver-haired girl this time still, which meant he would have suffered even more last time if it were not for his scheme. It seemed that the silver-haired girl hated Hansen to his guts. She did not conserve any energy, forcing Hansen to step back with her sword. Changing his footwork and using kiting skills, Hansen was not the match of the silver-haired girl because he did not know any advanced claw skills. He was merely using the claws at a knife with blade thorn. If it were not for the good footwork that Hansen had, he would have been killed by her a long time ago. Even with his footwork, Hansen was still hit so hard that he could not fight back. All he could do was to step back inside the hall in order to avoid the girl's sword. Otherwise, even if his claws did not break, his arm would be broken. The sword skills of the silver-haired girl were excellent. She almost became one with her sword, crossing the sky like a lightning bolt. She was so fast that her figure became a blur. Hansen tried to use the blocking technique in Dong Shin Sutra to block the sword of the girl. However, he knew nothing about her sword skills and did not know what the moves were. Unable to determine which move was the important one, he could not block her sword. Also, the sword was so fast that even with Han Sen's eyesight, he could not see it clearly, which made it even harder for him to block it. Ding! Hansen missed a strike and quickly avoided his vital parts. The cut was made on his shoulder and blood started to flow through the cracks of the armor. Hansen was shocked. Even the golden armor with gargoyle glyph could not block the silver slim sword which showed how sharp the sword was. The silver-haired girl became even fiercer in her attacks. Waving her sword faster and faster, she made it more and more difficult for Han Sr. As the sword was about to reach Han Sin's face, Han Sin did not have his claws in place in time, so he could no longer block his strike. That's it. 
Hansen gritted his teeth and summoned Mad Shield, putting him in front of Hansen to bear the strike from the silver-haired girl. Hansen quickly rushed to the giant statue and went for the spirit stone, no longer lingering. Ding! Hansen heard steel being ripped apart. The tower shield of Mad Shield was cut deeply by the silver-haired girl, almost breaking in half. Chapter 530, Twin Hansen wanted to take back Mad Shield, but the sword of the girl was too fast indeed. Before he took Mad Shield back, another flash flew across. Crack! This time, the tower shield was cut in half for real. The slim sword cut to the tall figure of Mad Shield like a lightning bolt. With a flash, there was a line added to the body of Mad Shield. Boom! The body of Mad Shield fell into two halves. The spirit was killed like that. Not having any time to regret the loss of the aristocrat spirit that he had gained not long ago, Hansen ran toward the statue at full speed. Treading cloud, Hansen had eventually put the footwork into use. Running like wind, Hansen rushed to the statue like a tornado. However, the silver-haired girl was not slower than him at all, but even faster. Catching up with him momentarily, she stepped her sword at Hansen's back. Without turning back, a golden worm covered in red armor appeared behind Hansen, blocking the girl's sword, while Hansen jumped up and spread the nightmare wings, throwing himself at the sparkling spirit stone between the statue's brows. Ding ding ding! The three strikes cut the golden rock worm king consecutively, and the red armor was cut deeply. Even the shell of the worm king was broken. Golden blood started to flow. Luckily, the pet armor that had become a berserk super beast soul was much harder than the tower shield, so the golden rock worm king was not killed after taking three strikes. Hansen took back the golden rock worm king. The spirit stone was right in front of him. Even if the silver-haired girl came at this moment, there was no time for her to stop him from taking the stone. However, when Hansen's fingers were about to touch the spirit stone, he suddenly felt a strong anxiety. His back was covered in cold sweat. Something's wrong. As Hansen felt that, he saw a golden figure coming from behind the giant head of the statue. At the same time, a gold sword went to Hansen's chest. That sword was so fast and Hansen was so close that there was no time for him to dodge. Whoosh! The golden sword pierced the golden armor into his chest. Hansen then saw the person who stabbed him. It was a girl with wavy blonde hair and golden eyes covered in golden armor, holding a golden slim sword. Except for the fact that everything was golden on her body, the girl looked almost identical to the silver-haired girl. They were almost like two dolls made from the same mold, only with different colors of their armor and hair. Boom! The blonde girl kicked Hansen down to the floor. Hansen fell hard and saw that on the back of the statue there was another face. The statue was two-faced, and between the eyebrows of the face and the back, there was another spirit stone, which was golden and shiny. Twin spirits? Hansen eventually understood why the silver-haired girl would be so relaxed to fight Hansen alone, not asking the creatures to hit him. Because that was unnecessary. The spirit shelter was in fact a rare double spirit shelter. In addition to the silver-haired girl, there was a similarly good blonde girl. Hansen could not even get rid of the silver-haired girl, let alone two girls. Without any hesitation, the moment when Hansen fell to the ground, he got up and brushed toward the outside. Motivating his body and cracking his bones, Hansen pushed his potentials to his limit. The silver-haired girl and blonde girl did not mean to let him go. The two beautiful but deadly figures rushed toward Hansen like to lightning bolts. Blood spilled like rain. Hansen had used the kiting skills to his limit. However, all he could do was to avoid his vital parts. The silver and golden slim sword continued to leave one injury after another on his body. The sword skills of the blonde girl and silver-haired girl were compatible. They complement each other and were much stronger when used alone. Hansen did not even want to fight anymore. He had miscalculated from the very beginning, so he did not have a chance to win again. All he could do was to go out as fast as he could in order to survive. With blood covering his body, Hansen was extremely lucid. His eyes cold, he quickly calculated every possibly as fast as he could. Hansen only had one goal. Under the attack of both royal spirits, he did not any chance to get the spirit stone again. Every step he made was traded with his injury. Every step was carefully designed, but it could not save him from being hurt. At this point, Hansen had no other ways than trading injuries for his life. When he reached at the stone gate, he was covered in a lot of blood already. 
At this point, Hansen could only celebrate the fact that he had both the armor and the glyph. Otherwise, even if he had practiced jade skin, he would have died a million times. The effect of the armor and glyph blocked the majority of the force on the swords of the girls. When the swords hit him, the remaining force was less than 30%, only leaving shallow marks on him. Although they seemed scary, they were not deadly, allowing Hansen to fight again. However, outside the architecture were full of all kinds of creatures including sacred blood creatures like the Black Snake, looking even more scary than hell. Hansen no longer had other options. If he could go out, he could survive. Those sacred blood creatures were still inferior to the girls. In addition, they were less intelligent, which was Hansen's opportunity. Boom. With all kinds of scary creatures at the door, Hansen did not cringe but rushed into them, thanks to his armor. The flying bull fiercely threw itself at Hansen, charging Hansen with its horns. However, the next second, a huge golden creature fell from the sky, smashing all the creatures nearby. Rush out! Hansen threw himself onto the back of the golden growler, which was the size of a hill and roared, grabbing his hair. The golden growler root and ran into the group of creatures like crazy, getting rid of the creatures and marching toward the main gate. 